News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a very good evening to you and welcome to Newsline Live. My guest this evening is uh, Mr. Eran Wickmaratna, a member of the SJB. Uh, and we are going to talk about uh, the economy, money, and people's problems. Very good evening to you, Mr. Wickmaratna. Good evening. Now then, everyone is uh, concerned. The, the, the Republic out there, they all know there's a problem. What they don't really know is what is the solution. On top of all that, uh, there, is, there are people who follow these things who are looking at it and saying, wow, the government made the payment of one billion dollars. Um, so we must be all right, Jack. <laughs> uh, well, if you have lots of payments to make and you make one payment and then you think that you're all right, then I would be questioning your wisdom. Mm. Uh, I think uh, not only this payment, mm. uh, I, I think there will be many other payments coming up mm. and uh, uh, I expect the government to make some of those payments uh, because as long as you have uh, some reserves, you can make some payments yeah. and when the reserves dry up, Right, there will be no payments to make. Mm. So nobody is hoping that uh, it will reach that stage, but yeah. it is clearly going in that uh, direction. Mm. Clearly going in that direction, um, because as we know, over the next few years, up to 2025, uh, Sri Lanka has to pay each year uh, four billion dollars plus in each given year. Mm. Right, which means that uh, you need to have have that, and you need to have uh, reserves which are higher. Mm. What is happening at the moment is that uh, because the economy is in a dive, mm. uh, our ability to access the international markets is reducing. For example, they made a payment on the ISBs, a billion dollars. Mm. Uh, normally, what you would do is you would try to roll it over. Yeah. You see. Uh, so if you go to uh, roll it over, it's becoming more and more difficult on one hand, and the other thing is it's becoming more and more costlier to roll it over, which then aggravates the situation mm. because the interest payments as a percentage of your revenue is extremely high at the moment. It's like 72 percent, right? Uh, and high by the standards of any country, and mm. so therefore anybody would be worried. But, but, um, with uh, global interest rates down now. Would it not have been possible to uh, to um, revamp, mm -hmm. reschedule it, or to uh, to borrow more, settle one, and have a bit more left over? Or is it not as simple as I make it out to be? Yeah, I, I think we need to understand the problem we are facing, mm. right? Uh, because when you when somebody says, "Oh, they paid." Uh, uh, you know, uh, interest payment or a debt payment they had to pay, uh, they're really talking about cash flow, mm. right? And there are various ways in which you can uh, take care of your immediate short-term problem. Uh, and one way is you use swaps. Mm. So you get, a, uh, you get the dollars from someone and you basically give them the rupees and then at a future date, which is normally three months yeah. or six months, and you swap it back. So you have generated dollars, your cash flow, and that. So these are short-term measures. Uh, what Sri Lanka has been doing recently is they're using this as an instrument continuously, mm -hmm. uh, the swaps. But so that is a cash flow problem, and you can keep making your payments as long as you can do the swaps like mm -hmm. that. Um, there are uh, a couple of uh, inflows like that. The IMF is giving the SDRs. Uh, the Bangladesh is gave us 250 million dollars in a swap. Uh, we have asked the Indians for 400 million dollars. So these are all short-term things that, some of which may materialize, and it will help you. But the real issue yeah. is a fundamental issue is, right, that your economy is trending down, right, and uh, you are living off borrowings, and uh, lots of the borrowings are foreign currency borrowings. Mm -hmm. And you are not generating enough foreign currency revenues, yeah. right? And then uh, you know, trying to pay borrowings by borrowings is becoming weaker and weaker. Mm. And then your way out is actually to attract investments, foreign investments, 
and that certainly is not coming because investors don't have confidence in the current government's policies or in its economic management. Okay, C can we move on to this? Um, this is um, in 2015 um, when the Arpanian government uh, came in. Uh, the per capita GDP was 3820, $3,820. When uh, you're left in 2019, it was 3853 which is about $33. Um, why was it so low? One question, related question. I in 2016 and 17, you got the IMF loans. Is it something to do with their conditions that uh, impacted our ability uh, to grow the GDP and so on? Is it something to do with their conditions? Yeah, the first thing, the myth that I must completely dispel mm. is the fact that the GDP didn't grow. Yeah. Right. When we, from the time we took over in 2015 mm. up till the third quarter of 2018, mm. the GDP grew at an average of 4.3 percent up till that point. So this and is only 33 dollars at the end. No, 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 no. Uh, what I'm saying is the growth of the GDP, right, right was actually positive. Mm from 2015 to 2018, right. third quarter, mm -hmm. and it grew at an average of about 4.3 percent. Okay. Right? The GDP kept growing. And then what did happen was, right, there was uh, basically a coup in this country. Yeah. Right? And uh, in the coup, uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa was appointed Prime Minister uh, unlawfully by the then President. Uh, and we had to go to the courts and basically the courts upheld our view that uh, he could not be appointed because he couldn't demonstrate basically a majority in parliament. And uh, nowhere in the world did this happen in, in that period, right? And immediately people lose confidence in the country because they ask the fundamental things like, you know, is the law working? And if you remember, yeah. for two months virtually, there was a standstill and the confidence was lost. Okay. The growth momentum was lost. So then how many days was that? 90 th days? That was, no, that was two months, yeah. right? Uh, from October to December. So in right. two months, uh, Mr. Vikmatna, the all this growth and everything went, took a nosedive and then we ended up with $33. Yeah, yeah, because it is amazing that how investors look at a country. If you have a coup and if the rule of law, right, is, is ba basically under threat, yeah. right, investors immediately yeah. uh, back off. So that was one, one reason. The second yeah. reason was in 2019, it was followed up by the East bombings, mm. right? And when that happened, that also hadn't happened in any country in the world on the scale that it happened, yeah. right? The confidence levels immediately deteriorate. So after the third quarter in 2018 only, the GDP rate began to come down. So this is a point that lots of people have actually missed. Otherwise, it was a very positive trajectory uh, in terms of the GDP growth. Very positive trajectory in terms of the budget deficit at that period in time. Because we had a large budget deficit, we set ourselves the target in the midterm to bring it to 3.5 percent from 7 to 3.5 percent of GDP. And we actually got it down to 5.5 percent and the direction was right. We got the country's revenues up during that period yeah. from 11% of GDP to 13% of GDP. Mm -hmm. All the macroeconomic fundamentals were moving in the right direction. I, and I'm telling you, if not for that coup and the Easter bombing, mm. and if he had gone for an election at the end of the period, this country would have had a different election result as well. Right? So this is what actually happened during that period, right? and we are still trying to recover from the consequences of that, that is what really happened. So no? that 60 days? Yeah, that 60 days and subsequently the Easter bombings, mm -hmm. right? Because when you have bombings like that, investors are not going to come. Right. So you, if you are, you, you're, you're basically your gaps, you're filling it by borrowings. Mm -hmm. Actually, if the country is to go forward, you have to eventually have investments coming in. Because if you don't have investments coming in, right, you are continuing to grow, grow on borrowings, then your debt, like Sri Lanka's debt, is like 110% of GDP, one of the highest in the world. Mm. Right? Then our interest payments are like more than 70% of our revenue, which is also very, very high. Mm. So this is why uh, I, I'm saying that 
And I am not saying that all this happened in the last two years. There has been a certain policy issues that have been coming over a period of time. Did the central bank, uh, in, for that same period, report uh, job losses of about 400,000? Yes, so there, there were, there were uh, obviously there were job losses, right? Uh, and, and it was only in 2015, right? Not only job losses, right? If you uh, go back in time and the mm. time we took over, there was a brain drain. Young people were leaving the country. Actually, in 2015, when we established our government, and which for which, because of the present crisis, right, people have forgotten and don't give us credit for, we actually reversed the brain drain. Mm. Actually, people were coming back into the country. Young people were coming back into the country. The rule of law was established, right? There was uh, many things done in terms of re reconciliation of the different surely, communities of the country yeah. and that. Now, yeah. we are back again to the period before 2015, right, where actually people are now again, young Do people you know, are talking of leaving the country. Yeah, you know, Mr. Commander, you, you say that the rule of law was uh, re-established, uh, yeah. if you like. Uh, in in your p in that Yapalne period, um, and the rule of law was so really re-established that uh, y'all weren't able to keep to any of the undertakings given in the campaign f uh, in which your leader then, uh, Mr. Sirisena, won the presidency. Uh, and you know they they all promised that all the wrongdoers will be brought to books so and uh, so on and so forth. And we didn't see that happen, and that was one of the big letdowns. Uh, I, 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 uh, uh, Faraz, I won't agree with you on that, right? I would certainly say that it... But the facts speak for themselves. No, you, you can't say that. The rule of law is not only about catching corrupt people. The, the rule of law is, for us, we, we came basically in a situation where, right, there were missing persons in the country, mm -hmm. right? We set up the framework to find the missing persons, office of the missing persons. People had suffered during the war and, and the reparations were not made. We set up an office to basically create the reparations. But a, and, and a lot of... I, I, yeah. I grant you that, but yeah. I'm going back to this business yeah. where you know about the the corruption of the previous administration from then yeah um, and we saw a whole heap of people being trotted out before the FCID and trotted yeah. out and in and yeah. out and in yeah. and out yeah. and in the end one yeah. one member of parliament was uh, remanded for about six months and finally uh, all we found out was that he was fined a thousand rupees I think two people were fined a thousand rupees each for not Paying uh, for not filing their asset, uh, you know, their declarations. Whereas at the same time, there were so many people with who hadn't done the same thing. So what I'm trying to say is this: this isn't it a myth that the, this rule of law was re-established? No, I, I won't say it's a myth for us. It certainly didn't come up to expectations, right? Because uh, certainly we would uh, like to see the wheels of justice move much faster. Mm. But uh, for us, uh, th there is definitely an issue there, mm. particularly in terms of justice. It needs to move much faster. Of course it is. Right. Now, now if you see... And we see the same thing carrying on now. Yeah, because as you see, the former uh, CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines and his wife convicted in an overseas court, brought into this country and we can't see anything happen. We see... Well, I don't know if they were convicted in overseas court, but they were named in overseas court. No, ne not only named. Specifically, if you look at that judgment, saying that monies had actually Yes, they, they, they make the point money, very specifically that money was passed, transferred right, to them. Right. Then Mr. Udayanga Viratunga has been extradited into this country, and we haven't heard anything uh, about that. Well, so, he's so loading it here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, so that is why I say I do completely agree with you that we didn't come up with expectations right uh, and uh, much should have been done but the unfortunate thing is this culture of impunity mm. right continues even today yeah. right? and this is something we certainly need to correct so uh, that 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 is one area in which I think the country needs to go because that is affecting investments even today and uh, just before we go for the break uh, actually let's go for the break right now uh, let's take a peek at uh, this evening's primetime news from News Fest. Uh, it's a wonderful program to watch, actually, the primetime news. So let's have a look, a look at the, uh, uh, the headlines and come back. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. 
Welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Mr. Eran Wickramaratna. <laughs> Mr. Wickramaratna, uh, may, may I ask you, a lot of people who come on our network and, uh, and even outside and so on, uh, they talk about the problems. The Republic knows the problem. There's a problem with the economy. And everybody knows about the pandemic. But what I'd like to see is some solutions. I'd like people to, who come here to tell us, look, these are the possible solutions. What is the solution that you and your party would have? Obviously, if you return to power, you'll, you'll play a key role, we believe, in the finance ministry. So what, is, what would be your solution? Yes, so for us on the economy, there are no shortcuts. You have to really get the overall framework right. And, and getting that right is so critical. So one of the things that you have to do is we have to attract investments. Mm. To attract investments, people look at what they call the country risk. And Sri Lanka is a very high risk country. Mm. And the country risk depends on the rule of law in the country. It, it, it depends on this whole thing you raised about corruption, yeah. right, and, and how the country responds to that. It depends on your track record and human rights, right? And I'm go not going to get into the details of that yeah. in the interest of time. But we have been on the down on, yeah. the, on the country risk over the last few uh, weeks and months. Yeah. Uh, that's one. Then also, right, our foreign policy will matter. Right, foreign policy does matter. The economy doesn't m move on its own. I it is based on the socio-political, because country risk is socio-political before we get into the economy. Mm. Right? And on foreign policy, right, we, we, we have to, we are an island, we have to access markets in the region. Our future is tied in the Indian subcontinent and in this Indian subcontinent market. I, I right? hear what you say, Mr. Yeah, Kramatna, yeah. but uh, with all uh, due honesty, the people out there in the, in the rural areas, in the non-urban yeah. areas, yeah. they're not worried about all these yeah. uh, f foreign policy and all that. They yeah. want to know when the cost of living is going to be more bearable, uh, when can they earn more money, uh, when is their food security going to be uh, well and truly established? And those yeah. nitty gritties. Yeah, for, for us, I think that uh, it's unfortunate that you know people are just expecting that answer. The problem with Sri Lanka for the last 73 years has been that we have to really sort the fundamentals out. We have to think like Lee Kuan Yew. We have to be very clear about the long-term strategy of this country. Mm. Every time, otherwise, our elections are fought and argued and everything on. Are, are, we this going this to are, are we going to give them some rice? Are we going to give them something else? We have to get the fundamentals what sorted I'm, out What I'm us. complaining about is, yeah. you know, you, you know the, the economic indicators, uh, yeah. the 48 there. Yeah. Well, sadly, neither the United National Party, the SJB, the SLPP, or the JVP, none of them, none of you all, say, look, we're going to attack this, this, and this of the economy because we want to get it moving again. Yeah, so, so for no us... No one's saying that. No, so for us, remember this, the economy is dependent on the socio-political. Everybody needs to understand that. If you don't get your country sorted out, you're not going to get investment into this country. Without investment, there's no future because you cannot get this out of borrowings. Government has gone into borrowings and we have got into a huge mess. Yes, that is we why need to get our exports that's going. We need to get I, our I, revenue. I'm going revenue to, collection I, I, is abysmal. I, I'm going to get, get to that point. But this fundamental issue needs to be understood. If this fundamental issue is not understood. You, what you are trying to do is you are trying to patch a tire. It's not patching a tire. You need a new tire. Well, that's that's the way forward. I believe the that's people the already recognize that. So but that is why if you are asking me how we are going to do it, I think we need to understand the fundamentals of how we are going to do it. it. Is, shouldn't it be a dual track policy it's whilst, dual. I'm, wh I'm, whilst we're getting the production no, up, no, the no, revenue I, I, up? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into that. Yeah. But I, I'm saying how important these issues are. We need to understand the Indian Ocean, right? The freedom of the Indian Ocean needs to be there. We need to understand Sri Lanka is an island. The, everybody is interested in the Indian subcontinent market, not Sri Lankan selling there, the rest of the world selling there. Yeah. We are the window to it. We are the window to it. We are the ports to it. We are the logistics to it. Mm. We need to understand that. Right? And, 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 and this conversation hasn't happened frequently. And there are lots of concerns about that. So as I said, 
We have to get the rule of law. We have to get our human rights order. We have to get the corruption. We have to get the foreign policy. Make sure. But what are the I'm, plans I'm, for I'm, investment? I'm, to bring I'm, investment I'm in. telling you, if you get that right, your investment will come. You are not going to get investment by thinking that you are going to give tax concessions. Sri Lanka's problems are more fundamental, and unless we do understand this, we are not going to get the foreign investment. Then I will say, fiscal consolidation is needed. You are right, the revenue is needed. We went we, down that we track. We have people from the government service, from you know, state employees, asking for more money. From where? Where is the money coming from? Exactly. So that time I'm going to go into the expenditure side. Yeah. Right? We have to be honest with ourselves. Revenue needs to be increased. Expenditures need to be capped. We have to prioritize in the crisis. We cannot think about fiscal infrastructure expenditures. The priority should be on human resource expenditures. You're asking us what we will do yes. if we were in office. Yes. That's why I'm saying that. Because it's human resources. You have limited expenditure. Where do you actually spend it? If you're in a family, if you have limited expenditure, are you going to spend it on your kid's education? Or are you going to spend it basically on painting your house? The, 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 the government movement identifying in their travels to the rural, uh, to rural Sri Lanka, I think that any of those families will have very big difficulty in understanding all this because what they know is that there's no opportunity, cost of living has gone straight up through the roof and they're constantly fi fighting a battle to have one square meal. I agree. And we have ministers who say, yeah. oh, you can do it with 3,500 rupees or some nonsense like that. Yeah, so that is exactly my point for us. When I say prioritize for human resources, what that means is giving those children, right, giving them the data, giving them the instruments, the tabs or the computers to actually get into their education. We are still talking about building roads and physical infrastructure. Put it on human resources limited resources, put it where it will affect the people. The next thing we will do is, right, we will widen the export base. Mm. Where the incentives will be given, if it's agriculture, we'll give it in technology, not just fertilizer, because productivity has to go up. We will, the backbone of this economy is the small and medium enterprises for us. Not recognized, we're always talking of the big companies. These people need to be given the opportunity to actually move into exports. There are two things that hinder them. One is quality. Give the concessions on technology to the SMEs. The next thing the SMEs need is they can't find markets. They just don't have the ability to find foreign markets. Government should focus on finding them the foreign markets. Put the resources into getting into foreign markets. So you widen the SME base. And then when you come to things like information technology, yeah. one thing we will do is right, we will liberalize the market because that's an area that can grow. If we don't have the expertise, we will liberalize the labor market so that the expertise can come. We need to do everything to generate foreign exchange in this country, exports. But how we can we do this when, for example, uh, the tea board uh, in this country, they, they collect a cess or whatever, they collect a payment from every export and so on. What are they doing with the money why are they not advertising our tea as you know the world's cup of tea from this tiny little nation? There are people who bring back gifts of British Yorkshire tea to Sri Lanka and only to be to be made a fool of say, look, excuse me, we, we grow this stuff here, which is much better. Uh, where where is the, the Sri Lankan Airlines carrying our logo? Ceylon tea. What are they doing? This is just one thing that I'm, I'm, I can remember now. Yes, so uh, I completely agree with you. If it's to do with exports and tea, right, for example, value addition of tea, I completely agree with you. Anything to do with exports, but I'm also talking about expanding the number of exporters, finding new markets, helping people to get there as an emphasis. And information technology is another area that can grow. But for there, there is a What's constraint. The point? People, they, all our embassies, most yeah. of them, are yeah. filled and stuffed with people with uh, uh, coming through political patronage, right? They, they, they are not going out and finding new markets for our products. Yeah. Well, what so, are they doing? They are all fast asleep. So for us, this is where it comes, right? We have to not close the economy like this government is trying to do. 
we should get more integrate, we should liberalize it, we should get out of this fear that we have, right? We have a fear. We have a fear of things that are foreign. You, you are talking about tea for us. Tea came to us from foreigners. Information technology has come to us also from overseas. Right? Garments industry we were helped originally also by foreigners coming here. Mm. So we have to get out of this fear of liberalization. Right? Liberalization is not anti-national. This kind of crap is being spread if we want to grow this economy. So that is why I, I keep say, saying right, your foreign policy is important. You need to reduce your country risk by the rule of law. You need to get your fiscal consolidation done by basically cutting cost, unnecessary cost, as you said, increasing your revenue. You need to widen your export base and put technology, help SMEs to find the markets, improve the productivity in agriculture. If information technology and industries like that, the constraint is human resources, liberalize the labor laws. We have to think positively. We may have to do some short-term measures. If this government is unwilling to change its direction in policy, we are going to be in a big mess. And then what will happen is we'll have to go for debt restructuring. And the way we are presently going, by mid to end 2022, this could be in a major mess. When is the Unless local government go elections due? Local government elections are due in February next year. Is the SJB ready, willing, and capable of highlighting the problems and taking the advantage? We are always ready for an election, and we, we are hoping the government will hold the election on time. Right? We are ready for it. We are organizing ourselves for it, and the people will get an opportunity to voice their concerns and opinions, and we are going to the people. And the most important thing is this is a democratic society, and these elections must be held on time. And that, there's no way around that. There's no way we are going to be basically insisting that the government holds elections on time. Do you think they're ready, the government, to test their popularity? They should, because this is a democracy. Aram Vikramatma, thank you very much for being on Newsline Live. Thank That's you. the way it was on Newsline Live this evening. It's now time for the primetime news, of course. And um, it's a wonderful program, the primetime news. Uh, it's full of... Uh, informative things. Take care, great evening and God bless you.